Hello, this is Paul from Forza Tech. And uh, with a little and this part this is the third part of a hyperbola. Uh, in this part I was going to show you what the definition for eccentricity and then what the definition for asymptotons, how to find them. Thank you. So here so first of all, what is the eccentricity? Okay, we're going to see what is eccentricity. Okay, tricity. You know this concept in ellipse, right? So what is it? And the second what is the asymptotons? So how to show where is B? Remember the parameter B in the standard equation. So this is the first. And the second I uh, was going to show what is the asymptotons. Okay. So this is the second. So first <coughs> look at the eccentricity. Okay, eccentricity um, we use E to describe. So first I look at it. this is uh, easy. It's uh, defined by C over A. Okay, remember he has the same definition, is the exact the same at the definition for ellipse. Uh, we're going to this one going to measure, okay? So we use this to measure uh, how wide or how narrow okay the hyperbola opens the hyperbola okay some parabola open very wide some parabola open uh, very small so look at it <coughs> so this is the definition um so I give you two examples, and the later we're going to see. So what it happens? The first I use a uh, uh, this one, and the one is open very wild. So look at it. This is very wild, okay. And the, another one. So look at this. The so look is uh, a little bit uh, narrow, right? So this we can see is a little bit narrow. So we can really say this is open wide. Is we say is open, open very wide. Okay, so this is open, a little bit narrow. So how about this parameter of e? So I was just going to show you this open wide at the peak. Okay, this is the peak. Okay, the peak e in this case. Okay, and this is the smaller. The smaller e. Okay. If e is smaller, then the open very narrow. <coughs> if e is much bigger, okay, the bigger the open big. Okay, if somebody say the bigger e open bigger, smaller e open small. Okay, just like this. Uh, so where is where is the fox? I want look at uh, one more. And uh, if uh, big e means what? If a is fixed the same, big e means big c, right? So C is much bigger, means uh, means what? This means uh, the focus is far away. So uh, the focus are far away, a uh, far away from what? From the center, of course, is far away from the center. In this case, okay. Well, look at it. Uh, um, so I get this. In this case, open very wide means what? Means C is bigger, right? E is bigger means C is bigger. So like a C is go to here. Okay, so this is the F. So everyone, can you see this? Okay, so probably F is at this. Open wide. Open wide. So if this is F1, this is F2. This is much bigger, okay? So this is far away the distance. So the second, if uh, E is smaller, means C is smaller. C is smaller means uh, the focus is close to the center. Uh, if I say it's like this, okay, so this is F2, this is F1. F1, can you see? This distance is shorter, this distance is longer. Okay, open wide, uh, far away from the center. Open, narrow, 
the focus is closer to the center. In this way, so we can find the foci, <coughs> our two foci are close, are close to the center. In this way. Of course, it cannot go beyond the vertex, okay? All you can say is close to the vertex. So everyone, have you get this? Mm, this is the first part, the eccentricity. Um, do, do calculation is easy. All you need to do is find a C over A. Uh, one more I have to show you. Where's the range? Okay, so how about all the values for E? So can we look at this? Um, so we look at this, the definition. Okay. And the, the meaning you already find that the bigger, the wider, the smaller, the narrow. Okay. And uh, how wide it can go? It can go to infinity. Okay, it can go to infinity. I want to look at this. Uh, because you remember C square equals A square plus B square. So C always greater than A. Means what? In this case, so we go one by one. In this case, E always greater than 1. So this is the range. Okay. This is the range. So where is the value for E? And the, the bigger the E, so you can say it like this. The bigger the E, the wider the open uh, the open of the <coughs> of the hyperbola. The smaller the narrow, how small it can be. <laughs> it can be the smaller is close to one. Okay. If you close to one, then uh the hyperbola will close to uh, the half popular were close to parabola. Okay, so this is a topic we did not cover in this book, but uh, I was going to show you a little bit. Okay, and I draw a small graph here, so everyone, so you can see. I put all the three uh, conics together. If you go Google, you definitely can find. It. So, if I draw like this, the descent. Uh, uh, this is a uh, high popular. Okay, I'll put it here. If this is a high popular, if this is a high popular, okay, so if we increase E and this will go uh, wider, so the widest is uh, goes to vertical line, okay, that means uh, when E reach to infinity and this goes to almost the, the vertical line, okay, almost the, the vertical line, and that's the limit. Uh, if this gets smaller, it will go to what? It will go to like this. And the smallest is this. The small. This is a e greater than one. Okay, e greater than one. This is a high popular. So can you see? Okay, sorry, it's very small. High popular. And uh, e goes down, and go to this case. E, of course, it cannot be equal to 1, cannot be equal to 1 in our definition. Uh, however, if it close to 1 or equals to 1, this goes to what? In other textbook, they call it, this is, a, uh, we know it's a parabola. This is a parabola, okay? If E goes down again, goes to less than 1, this one you know, right? You know that is what? Uh, extend a little bit. It should be close to like this. Do you remember what is ellipse? Okay. In this case, e is less. Than we def definitely we defined right. We define e for ellipse. This time is e ellipse. Okay. Other textbooks put these together. Okay. Uniform diameter. We did not. But you do know what is ellipse? Ellipse e less than one. What is hyperbola? We define here hyperbola, and the e is greater than one. So what is equal to one? We did not define. Okay. So if someone interesting, go to Google. You, we can define the parabola. Or in the future, like you go to other class, <coughs> and you will have access to these three. Okay. And do you have questions? Okay, so we move to this is the eccentricity. All you need is to find the parameter to calculation. Okay, don't forget the meaning. And the one more is asymptotes. So we're going to asymptotes. Okay, the second part is asymptotes. Asymptotes means what? 
you learned this concept from pre-calculus from 171, right? Okay, asymptote means that the graph approach will get closer, closer to that asymptote. Usually, is the vertical line, uh, and not the vertical. Sometimes it's a horizontal line. Sometimes it's a vertical line. Sometimes it's a slant line. Okay, so have an angle. Okay, this is the asymptote. Let me draw a graph, and the asymptote will definitely tell you what is B. Okay, what B? Okay. Do you remember? So we define B, right? We said this. Uh, we have A and we have C. So we have C square equals A square uh, plus B square. And in this way, we're going to define what is B. We know we define the A in the graph. We define the C in the graph. This is the distance uh, from the center to the vertex. So C is the distance from the center to the focus. What is B? Okay, what is this B? We're going to answer these questions. Um, let me look at uh, one graph. Okay, so look at uh, two. Okay, so two. The first is uh, horizontal. Okay, so I'm going to do horizontal. Uh, if this is the center, okay, the center is uh, HK. I want, <coughs> uh, I'll put the, uh, what is A? So A is here, right? If I say this is A, this is a V, right? Okay, and another is a C, okay, whatever. So I put a, if this is F, I put it the same. So I put a, this is a V, this is a F. So the left are called F1 and V1, so this is a V2 and F2. Okay, so where is A first? We know A is the distance from, I draw like this, can you see? This is A, right? Where is C? We also have the definition. What we don't have is B. I was going to show you where is B. So this is the definition for C, okay? This is the definition for A, the definition for B. Where is B? Where is B? We need to draw a right triangle, okay? So how to get this? Everyone, we have a rectangle, which is very important for us. I was going to get a rectangle. Uh, this is A. I was going to get a B on the Y axis, on the vertical axis. If I say this is B, if I gave you distance, okay. If I gave you distance, this is B. So uh, if this is B, the point should be H K plus B. Okay, so here. But I was going to give you is this rectangle. I want to be sure to get this rectangle. Can you see this rectangle? One point, two point, three point, four point. This is a rectangle. This is the most important rectangle in hyperbola. Uh, what is distance? I say this distance is B. Have you find? Okay, I mean the one side this is 2B, right? So this is 2A. So we can say like this. So this is B, this is B, this is A, this is A. So this is A, this distance A, this distance B, this distance B. This is a rectangle, the most important rectangle. Uh, I want you find a B, so where is C? Can we see C? Okay, whatever you do this, if you link this, see? Can we see a right triangle? Definitely. Okay, so this diagonal, this diagonal, this is C. And this is uh, also C. Can we find it? This is also C. Why? Okay, if you look at this right triangle, look at any right triangle. A square plus B square equals C square. Everyone, have you find? If I link this, that's the meaning for the parameter A, B, C. A there, B there, C there, okay. Another C is from the center to F is also C, right? Okay, so this is also C, this is also C, okay. Um, so how about this link, okay? If I link this, I extend, everyone, please look at, I extend this. This is straight line. This is straight line. And uh, if I extend this, is another straight line. This straight line we call the asymptote. 
Y is called the asymptotum. I think uh, this is asymptotum one, this is asymptotum two. Okay, so we have two asymptotum. So this is asymptotum. This is also a symptom. The asymptotum tells us how to draw graph. Everyone, so look at it. We draw a. If we know standard equation, we know APC, and then we can draw a rectangle, right? The center rectangle. And if we draw the rectangle, then we can draw how wide the, your parabola, your hyperbola will open. I want, so this time, how to draw the hyperbola? This vertex close to the asymptote, okay? See, this is the way we can draw the graph. Okay, good, 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 be careful. Have you found something? Okay, this is the how wide they open. If your box is fixed, okay, if your rectangle fixed, means how wide is already fixed. So you can draw this is the hyperbola. The same, look at that. This way goes to like this close and close. Have you got the idea? So the center rectangle is very important for you to draw the hyperbola. Of course, we don't need the exactly draw by your hand, by your by yourself, okay? <clears throat> but you know the concept. Here tells you what is B. B is there, okay? A, B, C all put it together. This is the rectangle, and the rectangle determine and the, the how how it open wide how wide it open depends on the rectangle. Have you get it? Now I get the equation. I get the equation for this assembly and this assembly. Okay, how to get the equation? Mm, this center we know, right? Means what? It means uh, this asymptote go through the center HK, okay? One point. What do we need to know is you know the slope. So how about the slope? I think everyone knows, right? The slope is this right triangle tangent, okay? Or you can say is this. This is B. So let me go into C. Uh, which triangle? I use this triangle. All the same, okay? I use this right triangle. So this is, so this side is B, right? So this is A. B over A is tangent. If I say this is theta, I want from here what you can get. See, you can get the slope of this line, the slope of uh, assembled on if I assembled on one. I want if I give you assembled on one, this assembled on two. So um, assembled on one has M one, okay, as the slope. So M1 equals what? Everyone know this. M1 is tangent at this theta. Tangent theta among this right triangle is B over A. Good, B over A. Have you got it? M1 the slope is B over A, positive, okay? And then in this case, we will get this asymptote on one. The first asymptote on, uh, asymptote on is this. The first asymptote on, which means asymptote on one, okay? And you know a point, right? So with the point, we know the point uh, go through the straight line is the center HK. I want, can we find the line equation? A simple line equation is this. Okay, I will use this color. I will use the point slope. I will use the points slope form. Okay, point slope form, we find this. Uh, should be y minus k, right? Equals m1 times uh, what? <clears throat> times x minus h. This is the point slope. Uh, of course, I will put plus k to both sides. Um, so m1 we know, right? I put log m1 first. I put log in m1 and then plus this k. I put plus k to the left. I put plus k to the right. And then put log m1 into here. What is the final? So we'll find out why if I draw this. Um, so at least the formula that I'll give you is this, right? K plus. So K. So here should be plus. M1 is B over A. And uh, I guess minus H. I want, have you find it? This is the symbol on 1. Okay. <clears throat> This is the asymptote for this. Okay. The same. I think everyone is easy to find it. What is the equation for asymptote on two? I was going to find <coughs> another asymptote on two here. Uh, all we need to do is symmetric. Okay, symmetric means that the snowball goes to negative. 
And uh, for this one, <coughs> first we're going to get uh, for this assembly line. Okay, for this assembly line, we say this is M2. M2 equals negative M1 because of symmetry. And uh, therefore, it's negative B over A. Have you find it? Negative B over A. And uh, in this way, and then we find uh, the equation. Okay, the nine equation is this. I simplify a little bit. The nine equation is only change the slope and the point we did not change, which means y equals k minus b over a, I guess minus h. This is the asymptote two. This is asymptote. So I will find if we put them together in the book, uh, in the review, I should use asymptote. Okay, for this horizontal type, this is a horizontal type, right? The horizontal type. Okay, and the horizontal type, the final one is y equals k. If you put this and this together, is plus or minus b over a, I guess minus h. And this is put together, right? So we put together. We just put two together. I mean, when you write, if you write this, everyone knows. So this means two asymptotes. One asymptote is a positive for slope, another asymptote is negative slope. The slope is determined by B over A. <coughs> and uh, the second, so I was going to show you only the results, okay? I was not going to, uh, to draw everything here. So the second type is a vertical. It's a vertical type. Okay. And the S vertical type, you know, right? So it's just the uh, just the rotate, not a degree. The everything is keep the same. The only is the position A and the B change position, right? So the slope change no longer B over A, but A over B. Okay, A over B. In this case, in this case, the results are directly the results for asymptotes. Okay, this time for the asymptotes is this a y equals k okay so they are all the same plus or minus a over b and the x minus h I want so we have also two asymptotes I want to see look at it this time the slope m1 or m2 is goes to M1 is goes to like A over B, right? Like M2 goes to negative A over B. So look at the original. This slope is B over A, B over A, but this is A over B because we change the position of A and B. Um, do you have a question? So I will upload this for you, and then I will give you example in the in in the next part. Okay.